I have enough money for me to pay for the public transportation or to buy food every day. I started eating snacks and I was like missing some classes until this teacher came to me and asked what was happening and why I was not so motivated anymore. And I didn't want to tell him because I thought it was like our fault and that that's something I should be ashamed of. And I was just crying. I was like, no, nothing's happening. Tabitha Amaral had a tough childhood. This is the story of how she overcame that challenge to become an inspiration for many Brazilians. My mom was a house cleaner and an embroiderer, and my father was a bus fare collector, which meant that we had a very hard life, even though I'm very proud of the neighborhood where I come from. Tabitha had just started studying at her local state school when one of her teachers, Simone da Silva, noticed something about her. She was gifted at math. Logo de cara eu percebi que ela era uma aluna que tinha um potencial grande, principalmente como eu era professora de matemática dela, eu percebia isso na área de exatas, mas também ela era uma aluna muito aplicada nas outras áreas. Her school decided to encourage her to compete in the Math Olympiad, a national competition for gifted children like her. I had a math teacher, Professora Simone, who knew I liked to study a lot and suggested that she could practice with me if I wanted to. I loved the idea and I did well in the first Olympiad. I was a silver medal and in the second year I won a gold medal, which got me a scholarship in a very good private school in Sao Paulo. And that's when my whole life changed. For the first time, I saw how unequal Sao Paulo is. I saw how, how unequal my country is. And for me, it was very, very hard somehow to understand that this inequality was not only related to health or access to education or security or how illuminated the streets were. The biggest inequality was in the size and the types of dreams that people are having. Tabitha was doing well at school, but at home it was a different story. Her father was an alcoholic, her mother was struggling with money. I think it, like things became much worse at my house when I was in the junior year of high school and my father had become much more sick, so he was not working. My mom, she was not working at the time as well. We suddenly didn't have enough money for me to pay for the public transportation or to buy food every day. One of her teachers realized something was wrong. I told him all the things that my father was going through and that I hadn't like had lunch in a very long time. That's why like I didn't want to participate in the Olympiads anymore. And this teacher talked to other teachers and to the principal of my school. Her new school came up with a solution which was life-changing. Edmilson Mota explains. Que solução que a gente viu naquele momento? A gente trazer ela para um ficar num hotel aqui, né? É que foi a solução mais imediata que a gente deu aqui perto do colégio e controlar a alimentação dela. Então ela tinha que trazer para mim todo dia o que ela tinha almoçado, o que ela tinha jantado, o comprovantezinho descrevendo assim, arroz, feijão, tomei um suco. Oh. <risos> They really did a lot and sometimes like giving a scholarship, giving an opportunity is not enough. Tabitha began to excel academically. Aged 17, she applied to several universities in the United States. She was accepted by six. My first acceptance was at Harvard University and at the time I got the email, I thought it was a joke. So I actually called the university to, to ask if it was true. So I think I was the only student who ever uh, questioned the admission because it was so weird to think of myself at the university and to think of myself in the US at Harvard was just out of my mind. Then another setback. Days after being accepted by Harvard, her father died. We lost my father to drug addiction and to alcoholism and other diseases he had. She decided to turn down the offer. And it was very hard because it hurt a lot, 
but I also felt that life wanted to put me in my place, to remember me of the neighborhood I came from, to remember me that my family had never gone beyond high school, none of my parents had done high school, and like just to say that, calm down, like you cannot dream this big. Months later, her teachers again spoke to her and persuaded her to take the place at Harvard. I only went, accepted the, the scholarship and went to Harvard months later, not because I thought I was good enough, but because my teacher showed me that if I didn't go, a lot of students from the poorest regions of my country, of my city, will never see themselves in that position. So I went, I hated Harvard my first year, it took me one year to understand Americans. I had to work as a babysitter through the whole education. With everything that happened, I really saw how unequal things are in Brazil and how deep this inequality is. And having seen everything that education did to me at the same time that I saw all its absence was making in Brazil, really put this driving me of like, I really wanted to work with education. So in my second year, I changed my major from astrophysics to government. And in her second year, Tabata began to enjoy university. Tabata Adonau de Pontes, government, magna cum laude with highest honors. She graduated with honors, and then she made another big decision. Tabata Amaral para deputada federal. She decided to return home and stand for Congress. I didn't have the experience. I don't come from a political family. Actually, I don't come from like a big family. I didn't have money. Uh, it's very rare to see people from the peripheries, so from the poorest parts, young and female and, like, and woman running. So it was very unlikely to be successful. For three months, I guess, I slept like four hours a night. So I'm still, I still need to sleep more. We engaged over 5,000 people somehow in a voluntary basis. We had 429 donors to compensate for the fact that we didn't have a big donor, so no one donated over 10% of our budget, which is really important for the independence of my cabinet. And at the very last week, I had no idea if I would win, but I knew we had done a good campaign. Many people had engaged for the first time. Many people were proud to wear my stickers in a country where people hate politics so much. Many people were starting to believe that maybe it was for us. And in the streets, a lot of, especially old people, would ask me if it was legal for me to run. And if I actually had like a proof that I was like approved by our tribunal. And I was always joked that like, I know it's not very common, but it's not written that I cannot run. So like, why not? And that became the, the main phrase of the campaign, why not? Because that's how we broke people's prejudice. She won her seat. Now she wants to change Brazil's divisive politics. Ela vai ter que tentar atravessar esse pessoal assim na conversa, né? Porque e aos poucos, nada vai ser de, de uma hora para outra. Ela vai ter que ir devagarzinho, né, com aquele jeito meio e doce dela, que eu acho que ela consegue sim. So right now I'm going to different cities, different neighborhoods to listen to people and to tell them that I want their help in designing what the itinerant cabinet is going to look like. So today I'm going to Campinas, to the University of Campinas, Unicamp, where people from the university and from outside is going to join me in a conversation about what my mandate should look like, how uh, the best ways are for me to listen to people, to get their ideas, to really do things together. At the Unicamp University, she is the person everyone wants to meet. When I see her and what she doing to this society, to, to the whole society, I think it's very important and it really motivates me to, to do something different, to give back to the I think she's changing the profile of politicians that we are used to in Brazil, which is the most important um, teaching I think she can give to, to her colleagues in Congress and also to the population. To have a woman there, to have a young 
woman there, it's it's the most beautiful message that she can give to to their colleagues that are old white men. Obrigada, pessoal. Whenever I go and talk to people, and I have been to different cities and communities, it always surprised me to see how surprised they are to see a federal deputy. So yesterday I went to this public university and they told me I was the first federal deputy ever to be in that university. And it's a very important university in Brazil. Tabata feels her life's mission is only just beginning. My biggest dream is that Brazil has the best public education in the future. So I'm competing against China and all the other countries in that. And like this is my life dream, but also a commitment to every election, every two years, to help, especially a young woman to get elected. Because we need more representation in Congress. And even though I'm very proud to be the first one of my community to like ever being elected, I can never be proud to be the only one. Todos os jovens brasileiros, idealmente, têm que ter oportunidades similares a ela. Se vão fazer tudo o que ela fez, com a grandeza do que ela fez, aí é claro, é por conta dela ser uma pessoa muito especial, muito determinada, muito inteligente, tem muita qualidade ali, né? Mas as chances devem ser para todos. Ricardo Mori, from the Atapa School, says he is delighted, but not surprised, at what this extraordinary woman has achieved. Está muito orgulho. A gente já sabia que ia dar certo. A gente fazia brincadeira na sala dos professores de quem ia fazer o papel de quem quando filmassem o, a história da Tabata no cinema. Então, muito obrigada. Eu tenho você também. Muito obrigada, então.